Hallelujah. <laughs> and welcome to your program, Shalom Shalom, with your host, Dr. Marisol Pelzer, and my husband, Reverend Dexter Pelzer. Amen. Amen. And today we're going to learn how to walk deeper with the Holy Spirit. Amen. How do I hear and obey the leading of the Holy Spirit? Mm -hmm. It's something that is critical for a Christian walk. Yeah. Because, you know, when you hear the Holy Spirit, your steps are ordained. Yep. Because the, the Word of God says that our, the Word of God is a lamp unto our feet, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So, so the Holy Spirit teaches us the Word. He re make, gives us revelation of the Word so that we have a deeper walk and are transformed by the Word of God, and He does all that work. Yep. So today's program is, is going to be amazing because we're going to learn how to dive deeper, how to walk deeper, how to have a deep intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Amen? And how to hear His voice. So I'm going to ask, I'm going to pray, and then I'm going to ask Brother Dexter to start the teaching. Father, we just thank you. Holy Spirit, we just invite you to this program and we ask you to speak through Dexter and to teach us how to hear your voice. And Holy Spirit, you are our comforter and our helper. Help us to obey God's word and to live lives that are a sacrificial offering unto him, to Jesus and to the Father. And, and we just thank you, Holy Spirit, for guiding us and blessing us. And we desire to hear your voice and to obey what you're speaking to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You know, this is like one of the most important things we can learn because Romans 8.14 says, Those who are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. So, um, and if we're not born of water and spirit, we're not born again and we're not saved. Jesus told Nicodemus, we must be born again. We must be born of water and spirit. We must have the Holy Spirit. And we must be led by him. This is really why God gives us the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's why Jesus said when he went up to heaven, what do you say? It's going to be worse that I go up to heaven? or It's going to be better because I'm going to go there and I'm going to send you a... Helper, Helper, the paraclete, the Holy Spirit. Which is Christ in me, the Spirit of Christ in me, which is the Spirit of the living God in me. Mm -hmm. the, and the power of, of God leading me in my life. And releasing the living waters of that power in other people's lives to bless them. Yes. I mean, this is an outrageous gift of grace. The gift of the Holy Spirit. And it is not to be taken lightly, it is not to be ignored, it is not to be diminished that the gifts and the fruit of the Spirit are now dead. They died with the disciples, that's ridiculous. Why would Jesus say, it's better that I leave if he leaves us with nothing? No, no, that's not the way it works. It's better that he left so that we have the gift of the Holy Spirit active today in our lives. And I want to really entice you with the scripture of really why we're teaching this. And you know, in the Spirit's on me right now, this is why we pray so many prayers of consecration of our lives to be obedient to each area of the Word as we read it. Mm -hmm. I want you to get this, because it's transformed my life, and now God is in control of all areas of my life, Lord willing, and He will always be, and I surrender them all to you, Lord, all the days of my life in the name of Jesus. That if you commit your way to the Lord, he takes over in your life. And by the way, the Holy Spirit descended on Jesus as a what? A, a ferocious eagle? A dove. And what, are, what do we know about a dove? They're very gentle, sweet. And they're easily scared off, right? Mm -hmm. So we must understand that everything that God does is with a purpose. So... And you know, Dexter, people don't understand that the Holy Spirit is part of the Trinity and that the Holy Spirit is God. And the Holy Spirit is God and the Holy Spirit actually feels 
and can be grieved and can be quenched. Mm -hmm. And the Father and the Son so looked at the Spirit in a way that we really need to, that our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, and that if we actually hmm, blaspheme the Holy Spirit, that's the unforgivable sin. Jesus says, you can blaspheme me. I'll forgive that. But you can't blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Now, so all this is telling me something really amazing about the Holy Spirit, that I want to make sure I have him in me, filling me, be filled with the Spirit, and that he's in control of my life. All right, let's read the why. Psalm 37, 5. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'm going to, verse 3. The, the whole psalm is awesome. I'm going to start with verse 3. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Mm -hmm. Commit your way to the Lord. That means every area of your life, including being led by the Spirit in the name of Jesus. Trust also in him. Don't trust in man, the word says that, but trust in God. And he shall bring it to pass, who he, God, he shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. And listen to this. He's telling us a, a new mindset, the mindset of Christ. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret, it only causes you harm. For evil dealers shall be cut off, but those who wait on the Lord shall inherit the earth. Wow. That was Psalm 37. Seven, Psalm 37, verses 3 through um, 8. Thank you. I'm telling you, he's giving us a mindset of walking with him, committing our way to him, and trusting in him. And again, the vessel in the new covenant that he gives to accomplish everything in our lives, the very power of God that raised Jesus from the dead is now filling us, the Holy Spirit. The resurrection of power of God is now inside of us. And it is also the way we what? Romans 8, 13, if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the flesh, you know, the power of sin, you shall live. It's everything now is to this gift of the Holy Spirit. So this is who I want to honor with my body as a temple of holy, sanctified, set apart unto him. And that's why the word says, if I sin with my body in sexual sin and join with another, that I'm joining, actually, the, my temple, the Holy Spirit, with another, in fornication or otherwise, and that is a horrible sin before God. Why? Because my body is actually the temple of the Ruach HaKodesh, the temple of the Spirit of Holiness. Amen. And when we understand that, we're going to have a whole different perspective about the Holy Spirit. All right. Now... Hopefully that brings some hunger inside of us. John 3.6. We're going to go deep into this. And the reason being, I want this revelation to be fully in our hearts, Lord. I ask you to yes. write it on our minds and our hearts and let us never be the same. Because even today, we're dedicating ourselves totally to walk in step with and be led by the Holy Spirit all the days of our life. In the name of Jesus, we surrender all for this, Father, in Jesus' name. All right. John 3, 6. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. And Jesus is talking to Nicodemus, and he says, of course, you must be born again, and you must be born of water and the spirit. He's saying there is no other option. We must, all things, all the old passes away, and all things are made new. You. In who? In Christ. Christ Jesus. My flesh is crucified. 
I now put on Christ, which is being filled with the Holy Spirit, and, is, and now the fruit of the Spirit, the leading of the Spirit is in control of my life, and my flesh stays crucified. This is my new life. This is a life born of the Spirit. This is a life I must learn who the Holy Spirit is, how to listen to him, how to follow him, how to recognize his fruit, and only release that in my life, and keep my flesh crucified, so the fruit of my flesh, the lust of my eyes, all that, stays crucified. These are things that God must teach me, and the Spirit, as we will see in a moment, will teach me all things about this. And, and, and actually, he is my sanctifier. He will change me. So that my desires are no longer for my flesh, and for the things of the world, but for the kingdom of God, and for what the Spirit is leading me to do. It's a completely new world we live in. It is the kingdom of God. All right, 1 Corinthians 6, 17. So that which is born of the spirit is spirit. 1 Corinthians 6, 17. He who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Wow. Verse 19, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For you were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God's. I want to step back and make sure that's why I want to make sure we understand how God created us. There are three parts to us, Marisol. What are they? Spirit, soul, and body. Body. How do we know that? Mm -hmm. 1 Thessalonians 5.23. I love to confirm everything with the word. This is important because when we understand this, we'll, we'll learn what to give authority in our lives to lead us and what to bind and forbid to lead us, which is our own flesh. We're going to be praying for this, so stay with us by the time we end. 1 Thessalonians 5.23. This is important that we understand this. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful, who also will do it. Now this is a prayer, and we're praying it over each other. Yes. Lord, we ask you, God of peace, that you yourself will sanctify us completely, and so that our whole spirit, souls, and body may be preserved blameless at the coming of you, Jesus Christ. And we declare you faithful <laughs> who will do it. And we surrender all to this, Father. In Jesus' name. Completely sanctified. Now, if I am not being led by the Spirit, that Romans 8, 13, if by the Spirit I put to death the deeds of my flesh, and if I'm not led by the Spirit, Romans 8, 14, those who are led by the Spirit of the sons of God, what's my life going to be like? <laughs> horrible. Mm -hmm. Not only that, it's the Spirit who witnesses to me that I'm saved. This is really important. This is in, in 1 John. This is spoken about throughout that epistle that John wrote. That we are to know that we're saved and that the Holy Spirit will witness to us even as to our salvation. And remember, that's even right after Romans 8.14. It tells us the Spirit witnesses that to us. Why? Because we're sons and daughters of God. So if I don't have this deep walk with the Spirit, I'm not going to have this deep knowing that I'm saved. And that's horrible to me. The thought of it even, that I don't know that I'm saved. I, 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 cannot, I cannot live that way. Not when now I know the Holy Spirit and He's inside of me and He witnesses to me consistently that He's with me, He falls on me, he has his own way of speaking to me that I have learned and I listen to. And he is so comforting in all things to know he's always there. And by the way, 
If you don't know the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, then you won't know the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit will keep you in the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. So no matter what happens in your life, you can walk in God's peace, and it will not trouble you. And this is the truth of the gift of God, his grace, which is the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Why? Because in the worst of times, you can walk in God's peace. And your soul, all can be well with your soul. That famous song that he wrote after his family died. <laughs> you know why he could write that? Because he knew the peace of God that surpassed all understanding. The grace of God, which is Christ in me. The Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, which is God's peace. All right. <clears throat> 2 <clears throat> Corinthians 13, 14. Again, every one of these scriptures is really important to me in honoring the Holy Spirit. 2 Corinthians 13, 14. The last verse of Corinthians. It says... The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. That's again a prayer that Paul was praying. That the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, God is love, and the fellowship or communion or partnership of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. You know, that word fellowship, you know what it is, koinonia. It means intimate fellowship, fellowship. Walking in step intimately with another. I want to reinforce how important that word is to God in another scripture, and you'll get this. The same word is used here, koinonia. And it is 2 Corinthians 6.14. Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what koinonia, fellowship, partnership, has righteousness with lawlessness? And what fellowship, communion, partnership, koinonia, has light with darkness? And what accord has Christ with the devil? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has a temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. If you understand the depth of that word koinonia, that we are to have now with the Holy Spirit, and we're not to have with the world and the evil of the world, we're not to participate in it. We'll understand what the word holiness means, which means to be sanctified and set apart unto God, taken out of the world, and put into the kingdom of God. So the desires of the world are dead in us. <laughs> Paul says that, read it, and we're dead to the world. This is the koinonia now that we're talking about with the Holy Spirit. This is not, Marisol, something to be taken lightly. No. And this is something that God's saying, you, you know, you're either all in or you're not all in. That's why the, the letter to the Laodiceans is about being lukewarm. Right? I would that you were hot or cold, cold. but since you are lukewarm, I will vomit, vomit you, you out, out of my mouth. Saith the Lord, Lord. Jesus Christ. Hmm. There is no lukewarm in this. Either we're led by the Holy Spirit or we're led by the flesh. Isn't that what the scriptures say, Marisol? Yes. Hmm. Let's let's look at that. Let's turn to Galatians 5.25. Now that we know that we're body, soul, and spirit. Let's look at our lives as Christians and both the warfare that we go through and how God gives us the victory in this. All right. Galatians 5.25. <clears throat> if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Okay? Now, let's look at this battle, Galatians 5.16 and 17. Paul says, he says, I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh, your body, your flesh. Three parts, your flesh, 
your body, your spirit, and your soul. Walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts or battles against the spirit. And the spirit battles against your flesh. flesh. And these are contrary to one another. Oh, wait a second, Marisol. Isn't this the same thing about don't have fellowship light with darkness? Mm -hmm. Idols and the temple of God and believers and unbelievers? Wait, wait, wait. This is, again, black and white. This is, again, if you don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit, you don't want to quench the Holy Spirit, I suggest you ask the Lord for a sword of no compromise. Yes. That you obey the word of God, which is eternal, by the way, and we stop obeying what we want to to condone our lifestyles. That's a pathway to destruction. The spirit against the flesh, the flesh against the, the spirit, spirit, and they are contrary opposites of one another. One is going to be, as we know, if we continue sinning, those sins of the flesh, it says in 1 John that we're not sons of God. But if we're led by the spirit, we are no longer under the law. And we will have victory and amazing fruit for our King of King and Lord of Lords. So this is not something that you can live a victorious life without. You cannot overcome your flesh in your flesh. None of us can. We can only do it, Romans 8, 13, if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the flesh, you will live. And that word is eternal life. All right. <clears throat> John 4, 23. You know, these, these scriptures are so deep when we just dive into them. Jesus says, the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in what, Marisol? Spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit. spirit. And those who worship him must worship in, in spirit, spirit and, and truth. truth. What does that mean? tell you about walking in step with the spirit and not in the flesh marisol mm -hmm. is it it's not pleasing to god if we're carnal or walking in the flesh paul taught about that right. correct mm -hmm. very clearly in fact it could be a road to destruction and you know and and it says that it's it's a command it says be filled with the spirit is the imperative and he is spirit mm -hmm. so in order to and what did the beginning scripture say? Those who are with Christ, one with Christ, or in one spirit with him. Yeah. If we're his. Mm -hmm. So I want to be one spirit in all things. Not just what I feel like giving to him. Oh Lord, I'll just, I have a problem, I'll give this to you. And then the rest of my life, let me live it the way I want. No, we must be in the spirit in all things. And led by the Spirit in all things so that our flesh stays crucified. Mm -hmm. That's the secret. There's no shortcut. There's no easy route. That's the secret. <clears throat> all right. Romans 8, 4. I love the way the scriptures keep reinforcing this, Marisol. The righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who... What? Do not walk according to the flesh, but, to the spirit. but according to the spirit. For those who live, that means you're being led, according to the flesh, will die. Set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded, that is to put your mind on the things of the flesh, is death. That's what not what I just said. a pretty word. That's eternal death. But to be spiritual minded is eternal life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. God. Oh, how we just love to ignore that scripture. 
My carnal mind, my walking in the flesh, makes me an enemy of God. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. So those who are in the flesh cannot please God. And then he says, verse 9, hallelujah, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies. That's eternal life. Through his spirit who dwells in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Holy Spirit you put to death the deeds of your body, you will live. That's your flesh. That's your fleshly lusts and desires. That's the fruit of the flesh in Galatians 5. Read it. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. This never ends. Listen, it keeps going. For you did not receive the spirit of a bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Father. The Holy Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit. Remember, we become one spirit with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, then we may also be glorified together. I am telling you, this is glorious. But this is all by walking deeply in step with the Holy Spirit. All of this, all the peace, all the joy, that some of us have been looking for. I only found it by when I was filled with the Holy Spirit. I only found it by being led by the Spirit and putting to death the deeds of my flesh. Therefore, there is now co no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Listen to all these promises. Verse Romans 8, 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. No more shame, no more guilt. The fiery darts of condemnation shattered by the blood of the Lamb under Hebrews 9.14 and 10.22. Why? Because the blood of the Lamb washes your conscience clean of all your past shameful, dead, sinful works. That's the power of the blood of the Lamb, Hebrews 9.14. Do you see all that comes upon you through the grace of God, through the actual power of the Holy Spirit? The fullness of the cross is realized in you and I through the power of the Holy Spirit. We truly, our old selves, our old Adam nature gets crucified. Read Romans chapter 6. That's what it tells you through Romans chapter 8. All this is by the Spirit. So if I want victory in everything in my life, I need to learn to not only be... <laughs> Filled, I need to ask for that. Luke 11, it just says, be, ask for the gift of the Holy Spirit if you haven't gotten it, and the Father will give it to you. Uh, that's a good beginning, right? I did that. You know that. Then, learn to walk in step with Him and let Him take over in your life. That's why we're teaching this. But remember, if you commit your way to the Lord, He will do it. I, I got to just tell you this. If you're all in and you're committed to the Lord, you surrender your life to the Lord, he will do it. He will not only give you the gift of the Holy Spirit, you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit, you'll be filled with the Holy Spirit, and you'll live a glorious life following Jesus. And at the end, you'll be able to lay your crowns at his feet. Glory be to God. All right. <clears throat> 2 Timothy 1.7. Second Timothy one seven. Yep. 
And Lord, I ask you to put a fire inside all of us for this and let it never die all the days of our life in Jesus' name. For God has not given us a spirit of fear. This is really important. Because sometimes this will be an awakening scripture for many who will live in fear of something from their past. Present or whatever. Something that happened to you. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So we need to recognize that the Holy Spirit is the fruit of the Spirit. Read it in Galatians 5. Doing seven minutes. That's what we need to be filled with. And when we're filled with that and we're led by the Spirit, then the gifts of the Spirit of 1 Corinthians chapter 12 will flow through us. This is all glorious. But we will not be fearful of things from our past. Those are washed clean by the blood of the Lamb. Even the very pain and suffering you've gone through, I pray, under Hebrews 9.14 and 10.22, that the blood of the Lamb washes you clean of all that past pain that Jesus took on the cross for you, and that we now surrender that all to you, Jesus, through the cross, and we break covenant with it and cast it away and receive your peace and your joy instead in Jesus' name. This is what God does for us through the power of the resurrection. All right. Now, Marisol, practically speaking, <clears throat> um, what are some of the benefits, right? It activates the gift of discernment, which it says to practice in. I can discern true from false, good mm -hmm. from evil. Yes. Ah, so it's all activating the Holy Spirit. And I want to just stop and pray that, because this is really huge. Father, from this day henceforth, first of all, we honor the Word of God, yes. the living and active Word of God, sharper than a two-edged sword, able to pierce yes. the division of my soul and my spirit, able to judge the thoughts and intentions of my heart. I surrender, yes. Holy Spirit, for you to use this Word always to guard, guide me, and keep me mm -hmm. in only your truth. I bind and forbid myself to walk in the false lies of Satan, whether it's through another man, a preacher, a prophet, anyone. I bind and forbid myself to obey those false words in Jesus' mm -hmm. name. And I only loose myself, body, soul, and spirit, to be led by you, Holy Spirit, yes. into the truth and to walk in that truth all the days of my life. If you seek God, amen? Yeah, and that's the key. Stop and listen. Yeah. When you seek him with all your heart. He says, I will be found by you. By you. Jeremiah 29, 11 to like 13. 13. Amen. Mm -hmm. I want to invite you to um, subscribe to our YouTube channel, shalomshalom.org. And, and to write to us and to send us your prayer request. And I also want to make um, a special invitation to our radio listeners. To write to us, our address is Shalom Shalom, P.O. Box 6201, North Hollywood, California, 91602. Let me say it again. Shalom Shalom, P.O. Box 6201, North Hollywood, California, 91602. We want to hear from you. And, and even like next week, I want to just entice you. Next week we're going to teach on, does the demonic realm fear you or is it your friend? Really important teaching. And God is revealing much so that we have a revelation of the ways of the kingdom of God, but equally we are not to be caught unaware of the schemes of the devil to destroy us. So we need to have knowledge of those. And so next week, again, a very important teaching. I'm really excited about what the Lord is bringing forth in his word. And I'm so thankful to him for that. In Jesus' name. God bless you. This has been your program, Shalom Shalom, with your host, Dr. Marisol Peltzer, and my beloved husband, Reverend Dexo Peltzer. God bless you. May you know and follow the Jesus Christ in the power of the resurrection. Till next week, blessings. Amen. Shalom.